first up is uh, Chris Coe from the North Penn City Library. And his cool fact is that his favorite digital resource has nothing to do with books, but everything to do with horsemanship. It's called Equa Trail. It helps track your ride history, speed, and also allows you to map your rides. Share those as well as photos of key markers along the trail, including discovered obstacles, emergent risk factors, and assess the endurance of you and your horse. It's just as useful for those who are hikers, backcountry skiers, or anyone involved in a trail based activity. Yeah. <laughs> However, Walter Zika gave me some other fun facts about our library, because mine is really the most unfun fun fact of this entire afternoon. <laughs> so, um, apparently 25% of our staff at the city of North Vancouver were flight attendants at one time. <laughs> and, um, also, Walter uh, notes that we are probably the most self-medicated library in all of Interlake. So, <laughs> very nice. Uh, thank you for that, Walter. Um, okay, let me just put on my... Uh, Okay, um, mine looks long, but hopefully it's not long. Um, and what I'm going to talk about, we, we didn't really know what we were supposed to talk about. So uh, Alina Garman and I got together and we just decided, okay, we're going to um, uh, uh, make this up as we go. And just so, to advance the uh, slide, which one's yeah. Okay, so uh, we uh, last November made a decision to do three things. We were going to uh, discontinue our hoopla. Um, service. We were going to migrate away from Biblio Commons in favor of um, implementing our enterprise uh, uh, discovery layer. And also we were going to migrate away from Overdrive and um, focus entirely on Cloud Library as our principal platform for ebook and audiobook delivery. Um, I'm going to talk today um, just a little bit about the, give you a bit of an overview about our migration. It's all within, I guess, four minutes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, principally, I want to talk about two of the features that help us make our decision to move to cloud library. Um, one is called CloudLink, so I'll tell you how that works. The other one is a pay-per-use audiobooks, which was introduced um, just this spring, which helped us uh, um, meet one of the objectives of our migration. I'm going to give you some statistics about what this means for us, and then I'll talk about visually uh, what the impact is. So um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time giving you justifications about what we did or why we did uh, with Overdrive. That's a discussion for another um, table and perhaps another uh, room. Um, we were very concerned about um, ownership of our titles. We wanted to make sure that our community owned our titles because no matter what the platform was, if a better platform came along in the future, we wanted to be sure that we had the content to migrate over to that platform without a whole lot of negotiation. Wait times were a real problem for us with, over, uh, with Overdrive. Um, and also we understood our community had some very specific collection interests um, that uh, we felt we wanted to be able to satisfy through local curation and procurement. We also um, heard many times about an easier user experience where we didn't have to talk about Adobe IDs and extra digital edition software and plug this into that and then plug it into that. And then um, um, we like the idea that collaboration, which was very important to us despite our move, um, collaboration was important to us and the software feature called Cloud Link would enable us to do that, either with folks in BC if they join or with other regions. Um, also, the pay-per-use um, audiobook uh, program, which was launched recently, would allow us to um, up our, the backlist support that we knew we would need with our audiobooks because we had very few of them, and as Sarah indicated earlier, audiobook usage and interest was increasing. So I'm going to talk about now CloudLink and how it works, and I like to wander around a bit. So, um, so the idea is that when a, when a user comes to uh, their discovery layer or their, their catalog, they usually see um, what's available. Um, uh, they even will know that something's checked out and um, have an option of seeing what can be put on hold. That's what a user always sees in a, in a catalog, in a home library. When you link with another system, um, they also have things that are available, checked out, or on hold. And you link with another system, they also have things that are available, checked out, or on hold. What a user in our library gets to do when you've linked with these libraries, and we've linked with two, the Greater Victoria Regional Library and with Coquitlam Public Library. What our user then sees when they go through our app, our cloud library implementation is, they see the available book from the, the one link, uh, link partner that we have and uh, the available copy from the other link partner. So our user only ever sees what's actually available. 
They don't know who it's available from. As far as they're concerned, they're in our catalog. And that book is available from our catalog. Right? So um, if they happen to use a filter that says, just show me any book or ebook or audio book that's available now, they only see that. Again, they don't know who the owning library is. Right? So it's a combination of all the things that are available, regardless of who owns it, across all of our link partners. All right, that, that, that's the way CloudLink works. Do people get that? So, yeah. Um, so paper use audiobooks. Um, what is that? Basic, basically, um, Cloud Library has 20,000 audiobook titles. And once you sign up for it, um, you have instant, uh, your users have instant access to them. They're mostly backlist. There's a few bestsellers, but they're just token as far as I'm concerned. But they are a lot of those series roundups uh, of titles and sort of nonfiction, sort of, you know, uh, who was Sherlock Holmes and um, who was Agnes McPhail kind of titles, but they're important. There is a usership for those. Um, the prices for pay per use are 99 cents, up to $5.99. You can bet that a bestseller is going to be $5.99. Um, you can set monthly limits as to how much your users are allowed to um, uh, uh, use before that uh, no more of those uh, titles appear. And by the way, they only appear if they're allowed to appear. So once you reach a limit of some kind, the user doesn't know that those titles have gone away suddenly. They just stop appearing. Also, you can set a pay-per-use limit. So don't allow any checkouts of a title that's going to be, say, more than $3 per, per title. Okay? Um, and those uh, pay-per-use audio titles are not um, accessible by the Cloud Link partner. So you're not using pay-per-use just, um, you only are using pay-per-use just for your users. You're not offering it out to the world as well, which we just couldn't, couldn't afford. So um, there's no cost to opt into that, and uh, there's no cost or penalty for opting out. You can opt out at any time. By the way, the Cloud Link feature, it cost us $500 to link with as many libraries in BC who had Cloud Library. That's it. One cost of $500 for the year to establish those links uh, for whoever was interested in doing that. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, the pay for use ebooks are coming soon. The, li the licensing uh, agreements across the big publishers for that with Cloud Library is taking a lot longer than the audiobook uh, um, titles did, so that's why they went with audio first. Okay, so what's the effect of all this? This graph, which has tiny numbers you probably can't see, or if you can, good for you, I'm too old. Um, February, March, April, and May uh, showed what the, um, the borrowing activity has been um, basically from us. So we borrowed, everything in blue is what we borrowed from Coquitlam Public Library. Everything in red is what we borrowed from Greater Victoria. And then everything in green is what we borrowed from ourselves. Okay, so this is what our users are doing with titles. So as you can see, our users are increasingly making use of titles available in other libraries that weren't doing anything. They were just sitting there languishing. And that was a real concern with us with our Advantage collection in Overdrive. Once our users had satisfied their, uh, their interest in those Advantage titles, those Advantage titles just sat there. There was no way to share those out with the rest of the consortium. Was that really a good investment? We weren't sure it was. Okay, lending. So this is now what uh, we are lending. So. The blue uh, shows how much we lent to Coquitlam. How, uh, the red shows how much we lent to Victoria. And uh, the green, which will match the same green uh, numbers before, is how much we lent to ourselves. But as you can see, we're lending out quite a bit to our two link partners. So NBCL borrowing versus lending. So how much are we borrowing versus, versus lending? We're lending out a lot more than we are actually borrowing for ourselves. That's okay with us. Again, those titles would otherwise just sit in our um, platform languishing. And as a library that is committed to collaboration and consortial lending, it made sense to us that why not, why not get some use somewhere? The owning library gets the stat, the lending stat. So if we own the title and we lent it, we get the stat, the, uh, the, uh, the search stat for that, right? I, I've been trying to figure out how BC physical interlibrary loan works um, in terms of who gets the, uh, the stat, in terms of net lending and net borrowing. But the cloud library, um, uh, cloud link service really is truly interlibrary loan digitally. So it's important um, with paper use audiobooks, I'll just, we just launched in uh, May, so we've had one month of it. 190 titles were borrowed through paper use, um, 89 users. 
the average cost of that was $260 per unit. I'm oh, sorry, $2.60 per unit. <laughs> Oh my God, I'd be fired so fast. Um, and the, uh, the uh, reading interest of that, um, of that pay-per-use uh, audio, audio, remember, uh, was romance, detective, and mystery, and erotica. And I'm pleased to say that it forced me to look at what titles the uh, erotica genre was, um, uh, was uh, being accessed, and it's equally divided between fiction and nonfiction. Again, it's audio which makes that very interesting to me. Um, <laughs> and the most popular titles, A Man Called Ove, I Found You, uh, Castle of Water, and uh, Stephen King's uh, Writing the Bullet. So with cloud link and pay-per-use, um, the question is, is this worth it? Is it worth it to spend $500 a year uh, to link up with all these libraries? And um, how does it compare to what we were like when we had both Overdrive and Cloud Library running at the same time? So, Last year at this time, we um, had 3,287 checkouts um, uh, uh, through the com combined OverDrive and Cloud Library implementations that we had. If we were alone, had just gone alone, the Cloud Library, we would only have had 1,160 checkouts this year. But with CloudLink, that number put us up to 2,529. And the paper use implementation allowed us to reach 2,719 checkouts. That surpasses the same period in 2015. It's not quite where we were this time last year. But basically, as a result of linking with just two libraries, we're achieving almost the same usership that we did uh, when we also had Overdrive. And the reason for that is because what we know about our community is they have, for the most part, current um, publication reading interests. So the bestsellers, the latest bestsellers, um, what's recent, what's had buzz. Those popular titles are the things that our community seems to be interested in. There were a few people um, of the 14 written comments that we received with our migration to cloud. Um, there were people who were begging and scratching, Sarah Felcar and Jennifer O'Donnell, um, at our neighboring libraries on the North Shore to sign up for um, cards to keep access to Overdrive. But slowly, those people have come back because anybody who wanted a title that they, they knew we didn't have in cloud library, we bought it for them. We also migrated all of the holds lists that were currently in Overdrive over to Cloud Library. We bought the holds lists that went live. A lot of people were just scared that we wouldn't have done that, didn't know that we had done that. So that number is continuing to grow. We're very encouraged by those two features. It's just another way of consortially uh, participating with partners. Um, it happens to be the way that we chose. Thanks. So the way the cloud works um, is that uh, we have purchased a right to have single-use um, uh, availability of that title on our platform. So um, if we wanted, for instance, to move to another platform, like something called Garbadika uh, became came along and it was a great um, deliberate platform, we would be able to take that title and then move it over there. The publishers don't care what platform your unit is on. They only care that you comply with the fact that it's a if it's single-use, it's single-use. So that, that's why, for instance, we were able to move our, our Advantage titles over to Cloud. But, it, but it's still, the titles are still either one copy, one user, or meter of access, yep. or yep. So it's just, you're not necessarily owning them forever, it's just whatever the license terms Whatever the licensing yeah. agreement is. But um, for those titles that are not metered and so on, we actually get to keep them. Yeah. yeah. We're not totally relaxed about all this. We're still monitoring it. So we're not sitting back on our laurels and just taking it easy. We're still very actively um, interested in making sure that we pursue um, any platform or um, method of uh, e or audio delivery online um, that will work smoothly for our customers. That's the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again.